Hello, everyone, and welcome to Farming Matters. I am your host, Erin Schneider. I work at the North Central Sarah Program. I also farm in Wisconsin. And on today's show, I'm, I'm joined by Marie Flanagan, the producer and director of, um, of the show. Welcome. And, yeah, I'm especially <laughs> grateful to be joined today by uh, Joya Walker, the farm to school educator with Earth Dance Farm. Joya, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. (laughs) Thank you for having me here today. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, Earth Dance. Like, I mean, where where are you located? What kind of what kind of work do you do? And what sort of drew you to your SARE project? Yeah, so um, Earth Dance, we're Earth Dance Organic Farm School, um, but for short, we just go by Earth Dance. But we are a teaching farm located right in the heart of Ferguson, Missouri. Um, we work with adults um, and offer adult education, and we also work with youth and offer youth education, um, specifically um, in partnership with the Ferguson Florissant School District. But we also uh, connect with other schools um, outside of that school district uh, via uh, field trips when they, they come out and visit the farm. Our SARE grant was actually in place before I started, and so um, I was able to come in and uh, kind of fall of 2022 and just kind of jump in and picked up where our previous farm to school educator left off. So, um, yeah, like I uh, said, we're Earth Dance Organic Farm School. So um, we have lots of different people that come out to the farm. So these are some pictures of volunteers, some of our um, our farmers, some of our farmers and staff. Um, so we, we all take turns getting our hands in the soil. Um, we're a 14 acre farm located in the heart of Ferguson. We're a nonprofit organization. Um, our mission here is to advance food justice by training organic farmers and gardeners of all ages, um, providing connection to healthy food in the land and to cu- cultivate a vibrant community. Um, so I'll give you a little information about me. So um, I studied culinary arts back in 2004 at uh, Forest Park Community College. Um, And I was able to take what I've learned from there and start a small meal prep and catering business that's um, specifically focused on health um, and wellness coaching now. Um, So in 2022 is when I came to Earth Dance. I came as a summer apprentice Um, I wanted to know how to grow food for my business and I wanted to know where my food was coming from. And I actually grew up in Ferguson. So it was very cool to me to find an apprenticeship program right in my very neighborhood that I grew up in. So um, I was accepted in the apprenticeship program in 2022. And once I uh, completed the program, the farm to school educator role opened. So I, I finished the program in July, the role opened in August. And so um, I was just kind of able to transition right from the apprenticeship into that farm to school role. Um, And then currently I serve as the farm to school educator here at Earth Dance. um, And I'm able to connect with, I've been able to connect with hundreds of students and lots of teachers um, in the very school district that educated me. So that's kind of a full circle moment for me. (laughs) Um, So one of the things that we do is um, education, adult education. Um, we offer adult. We've been offering adult education for years, I believe, since two thousand nine. Um, and spring training is um, one of our newer programs. Um, it's a five week program for adult um, beginner gardeners that want to know more about starting a garden or composting or um, just need a little bit of help or a little bit more information. Um, So we do online classes and hands-on classes in that program. And then we like highly encourage the Ferguson Florissant teachers to participate in spring training because the class is free for them. And then they also receive a professional development stipend for participating in the course. Um, And I really believe that teachers that go through spring training feel more equipped to get out in their school gardens or start a school garden. And then um, they feel more confident in bringing the garden into the classroom. So uh, we are really rooting rooting for teachers to join spring training and and get uh, get the knowledge that we have available for them. 
Um, another big thing here at Earth Dance is youth education. So we're doing this in a, a couple different ways. Um, we host field trips for students that are K through 12. And actually we have some college students that come out as well. Um, we go out and visit the first floor schools um, within the district. We um, do some What's Fresh days, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but we, we, we visit the schools. Um, we host a summer camp um, called Strength and Honor. They've been coming. This, this summer will be their 12th summer that they've been coming to Earth Dance. So we see them every Friday. We do different activities on the farm. One of my favorites is um, Cabbage Baseball where we have like little cabbages that maybe the bugs have gotten to and we can't sell them, but they're perfectly round. And so that makes them perfect for baseball. And so we, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we have a small field that we don't grow anything on. And so last summer we were able to take the students out and play cabbage baseball with um, using bolted lettuce as the bat. So that was a, a very creative way to get the kids interacting with the food, with the food that we grow. That's um, fantastic. We, <laughs> we also uh, host interns from Innovation High School down at Cool Valley, um, which is within the district right down the street from the farm. Um, and we are newly um, hosting, we're newly going to be hosting students from um, an after school program within the district called Unleashing Potential. So they'll be doing some cooking days. We'll be talking about creating value added product and entrepreneurship, and then they'll be visiting the farm as well. So I'm excited for that new program. Um, so farm to school, all of these things that we do with students are, they fall under the farm to school umbrella. Um, and we were able to receive different grants and um, from SEER and from uh, USDA. And um, this allows us to kind of work with as many students as possible. So on the left, you see uh, the agriculinary interns. Um, they had just finished their program last year. Um, in the middle picture, we have um, the current interns that are here for this year, um, kindling some eggs. And um, and then on the picture on the right, we have students at um, one of the middle schools. Um, this was actually their first time going out into their own school garden and learning how to harvest the things that were there because everything was just grown, but the students didn't know how to harvest. So I was able to go out and teach them how to do that. Um, so the agriculinary internship, these are the students that I work with the most. Um, it's the, a hybrid program of uh, blending agriculture and culinary arts. And so um, we are able to work with Innovation High School uh, doing their LTI or learning through internship program. Um, and we meet with these students every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, some days they come to the farm, some days I go to them at their school. Um, and then we also do field trips and um, we visit a commercial kitchen and we do some of our cooking days um, in that commercial kitchen and then also on the farm when we have nice weather. So um, you can see on these pictures, um, they were helping harvest some watermelon and I believe we harvested like 900 pounds of watermelon that day or something like that. Uh, <laughs> we also, in the next picture, um, Build, a, build two hydroponic towers in their classroom um, so we could learn about growing year round. Um, on this third picture, we have Kevin who is making spaghetti for the first time. And so uh, we actually went out into the fields and harvested different ingredients to include in the spaghetti to kind of jazz it up or um, to allow the students to put their own personality on um, a familiar dish. And then this last dish was made by one of our um, interns, Cameron, who really wanted to make chicken curry. And so um, we went out again to the to the fields and harvested some basil and hot wax peppers. And um, we have parsley and some, some more, I believe some tomatoes and green onions and whatever we could find to add to this curry. And it was just, it was really good. <laughs> Um, so what's Fresh Days? This is something new that we've um, added to the Farm to School program. And um, 
what we're able to do on these days. Um, we go out to different classrooms. Yeah, I get to talk with students about locally grown produce. Um, I get to talk to them about the health benefits of eating locally grown produce. Um, I also get to talk with them about food justice and organic farming practices. And so, so far, I um, was just doing What's Fresh Days for a couple months. Um, we've been able to reach over 300 students. Um, we've done some parents' nights, and so we've reached about 125 parents. And we've also been able to interact with about 35 teachers um, just doing these What's Fresh Days. Um, and then also, it's we also have a What's Fresh segment in the Ferguson Neighborhood News. So I'm able to write that um, article for the paper every month and then kind of get the word out about um, our produce, health benefits, and all that stuff to the people right in our community. Um, so with our involvement with the community, um, we are participants in the Ferguson Farmers Market. Um, one thing that we've recently adopted with our um, Farmers Market participation is the pay what you can model. So we, um, we have a pay what you can farm stand, which is located right here on the farm. But at the farmer's market, we're able to apply that saying pay what you can. So people are able to come and shop and get what they need and pay what they, um, what they can. They're able to use um, EBT and SNAP benefits to buy the produce that they need um, at the market and then also at our farm stand. And so um, these two, offering these two things, um, is a way that we're furthering food justice. Um, we're also, we also do pop-ups with Edward Jones, where we're able to take our farm stand to the Edward Jones buildings and then still offer that pay what you can model for the employees there. So um, yeah, this is, these are a couple of ways that we're working to advance food justice. Wow, Joya, that is, that is quite the ecosystem of both programs and plants and people that you are all impacting. Um, and thanks for just sharing your story and how you kind of delved into the agriculinary program. I'm I'm curious, like along the way, like what were um, what were some like aha moments that you think the youth had? Yeah, I think one of the it's kind of simple, but like one of the aha moments that I think really intrigues kids is when they realize that pickles come from cucumbers. And then because kids think that pickles are their own like vegetable. And so when we tell them that these come from cucumbers and then it kind of sparks this interest of like, oh, well, what are cucumbers? How do cucumbers grow? How do cucumbers become pickles? And that's kind of like that whole agriculinary process is taking something that's from the field and then making it something that you can eat. Not, not that it can't be eaten from the field, but kids like pickles. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of that seed, uh, that simple thing that you can take from seed to harvest to then to the table. Um, so I think that that was a big aha moment for a lot of students. Um, also, just being outside and in the soil, I think like the first um, knee jerk reaction is was I don't want to get dirty. But then as like kids are out there and they're in the fresh air, they're touching things, they're learning how to do things and they're building their confidence. They kind of don't think about the getting dirty so much. They think about getting out and doing the work because they see like the fruit of their labor when they come to the farm that day and we get out and they learn a lot of stuff. And then we take everything into the harvest house and we weigh what it is that we harvested and they can see their contribution. And so I think that's, um, that's been a big thing for the interns that come out and participate. At what point do you get that that um, feedback from them about the kind of activities they'd like to do or that they're interested in? So we do um, a pre-assessment, like their, their first day when they come to the internship is just kind of like, kind of relaxed. And I have a curriculum that's already written, mm -hmm. um, but we do that pre-assessment. And so I get to learn what they know, um, what they're interested in, what they know nothing about, and just, I can see where they are. And then a lot of this has been kind of like being very flexible and adjusting on like on the go. Mm -hmm. And so um, is and it's just like starting with the with a plan, but being able to 
be flexible within that plan. And so we do a pre a pre assessment the first day. We do um, like a, in a, another assessment halfway through the semester to just kind of see, OK, are things sticking? Are you retaining this? Are we still interested in this based on, based on the experience you've had so far? Do you have new things you want to know about or, or something that we've already done that you want to dig into a little further? And then we do the end of the semester assessment. So it's kind of like, okay, at the end of this semester, do you feel like this was beneficial to you? Um, is there anything that we missed? Is there anything that you would like to see be different? Because a lot of these students that participate in the internship, they actually returned. So I have some students now that this is their third year participating in this internship. And so I don't want it to become stale or boring, but I, but I still want it to be like familiar where they get to exercise the things that they've learned. You could share a little bit about maybe how perceptions may have shifted or do any that you have interest in going on and um, past uh, agriculture in your area or, or they're still kind of learning about all the options for them? Yeah, I think they're still learning about different options. Um, we ha I've had one, um, one intern, she was able to sit in on a soil sampling workshop and when she heard that like there are not a lot of soil scientists in Missouri, it was like she kind of heard like this is my my niche. Like I can go to school for this. Um, Lincoln University here, they they actually offer a scholarship program where it's everything is covered, um, tuition, housing, and they also offer a summer job. And so with um, this particular student being interested in that scholarship. It was like the dots connected for her. Like I can be a soil scientist. It's you know, there's not a lot of people doing that. Like I can do this and be be valuable in this community. And so um, that was like, I think how that kind of connected for her. She was able to explore that. And then I think um, there's another student. He's very into bugs, and he didn't know that he could go to school for that. And so. <laughs> It's, but so we've been just kind of like really encouraging him to go to school, go to Lincoln, take advantage of that scholarship. And then there are other students who it's it. I don't really they haven't really expressed interest like beyond the program outside of just having a garden at home. But for um, another student, it's being in the garden, being able to touch mint leaves and lemon balm mm -hmm. leaves and have that texture on his hands and then have the fragrance of that herb come up um, for him to see what's growing, touch it, smell it. It um, helps him like with anxiety. And so now he may not go on to be a farmer or anything, but he now has like a tool that he can connect with a, with nature to help him with um, the anxiety that he's working through. Can you share the, the origin story, if you will, of cabbage baseball. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it actually started with the farmers. So I, it was during my apprenticeship, and I don't know if they've done this before I got here, but this was my first time seeing it. Um, 2022, I think it was like summer. It was hot. We were tired and we were just taking a break. It was like toward the end of the day, but we were taking a break and there were all these cabbage that the cabbage moths and the cabbage worms had just gotten into and we couldn't sell them. And so things that we that get like really, really damaged by the bugs, like if it's too bad for us to give away or, you know, give to volunteers or take home the staff, it goes in compost. So nothing here is wasted. And so I guess the idea was, well, before these cabbages go to compost, <laughs> we're just going to play a little baseball. <laughs> so, that's awesome. so that's how it came came about. <laughs> I love it. You're just helping the breakdown process with the compost. Yeah. Thing, right? <laughs> and we, we went and they just, you know, we played in the grass. So they, they're just going to decompose right in the grass. So. <laughs> that's awesome.